Welcome back guys. This week I'm doing my first attempt at making a liquid soap. So I'm going to be giving you guys all the measurements and I'm going to be giving you tips on how I made liquid soap. Find out if it was success successful or not. Oh boy, I can't talk. Um, but I will give you a lot of tips throughout the video because I did struggle with this and I don't recommend this for anyone who's never made either, you know, cold process soap or hot process soap, something of that sort, because it is kind of similar. It's a different process though, and you do have to kind of have knowledge of like how to cook things, when things emulsify. Um, I mean, you can do this as your first thing, but I think it's you're going to find it challenging if this is the first kind of soap that you're making. So we're making everything from the scratch, and the first part that we're going to do, or step number one, is that we're going to melt down all the butters and oils. And for my recipe, I'm using coconut oil, sunflower oil, castor oil, and olive oil. Um, you're going to put them in a crock pot. The recipe that I found online has instructions and it says to use a six quart crock pot. That's what I used. I ran into some issues. I'll explain those later. But anyway, so you want to go ahead and start combining all the oils, measure them out, put them in your crock pot and let them melt for about 15 minutes or so depending on how hot your crock pot gets. Um, mine it took about 20 minutes or so to actually melt the oils all the way down. Um, and then while you're waiting for the oils to melt down then you can start measuring out the other ingredients. As you can see I've got all my oils combined into the crock pot and then I'm going to go ahead and set this on high and let everything melt down. Um, I'm going to try to be speeding through the video as much as I can because this it really was an all day process and I have a lot of video so I don't want to make you guys sit through anything more than you have to. Now let's move on to step two. For this part we started making the lye solution and this is a little bit different than like cold process soap but it is similar. We are also using potassium hot hydroxide lye um, which is again different than from cold process or hot process soap. The abbreviation is KOH. Um, you want to use 8.9 ounces of this and then we're also going to be measuring out our glycerin and we're going to do 26.71 ounces of this. You want to make sure you're mixing this in a stainless steel container and you do not want to walk away from this while you're melting it down. Once you have everything measured, you want to take it to the stove top and heat it on a low to medium heat. Again, do not walk away, don't go anywhere. Um, the directions online that I, I saw said it should take about five to eight minutes. I think it took me about 10 um, because you really want to mix the um, lye solution until all of the little lye crystals are completely dissolved. And I kept just stirring and stirring and stirring and finding little floaties in mine. Um, I found that you could press them up to the side of the um, you know, pot and kind of smush them a little bit with your spatula. That helped me a lot. Um, also, you it doesn't look clear while you're boiling it down, and you guys can see that here. Um, but once you turn it off and remove it from the heat, you will start to notice that it is pretty clear. So if you turn it off and you don't have heat on it anymore and you notice like little live flakes in there, you need to turn it back on and make sure they are completely dissolved, guys. So I did speed this part up quite a bit and took out some of the stuff so you guys weren't sitting here bored. But the lye crystals in the beginning, they kind of stuck to the pot a lot. So it does look like I'm struggling to stir it. That's really how it was. Um, and this is probably about stirring it for about five minutes or so. And then you can still see quite a bit of the lye in there. So again, I just kept stirring and stirring and stirring until it was gone. Um, and then when I removed it from the heat, again, you could see it, how it turns clear. Okay, so now that the lye is completely melted down, we want to go ahead and add it to our hot oils. Um, so you're just going to put it directly in there and you're going to stick blend. Um, the directions that I read said to stick blend for about a minute or until it's fully emulsified. I had to stir this way longer than a minute. Um, it says the batter will be a thin trace. Um, I wasn't sure because I saw other videos online where the soap batter actually got really thick and clunky. Um, mine kind of did a little bit, but not like what I've seen on other videos. So it was kind of a surprise to me, but this recipe, um, as long as everything turns out, um, you know, it just, it wants it to be kind of like a thinner, almost, it's not even applesauce consistency, but a thinner consistency. Um, it says it'll be a thin trace. It also says 
to cover the cook cover and cook the soap for about an extra 20 minutes on high. Um, it says stir the soap with a spatula. You'll notice it's starting to thicken up a bit. Cook the soap for about 20 to 40 minutes and stirring every 15 minutes or so in between um, the soap to make sure that it gets like a clear amber color and um, there might be a layer of foam on top. So at this point I've been stirring for quite a while. I would say it's been over five minutes. Um, as you can see too on my uh, stick blender like little bubbles were going in between like the gaps. I don't know what you call that. Um, and you can see like almost like bubbles. Um, I don't know how well the camera picks that up. But I was also getting bubbles when I was stirring it kind of like flying out. So it was kind of interesting. Um, I was feeling pretty comfortable that everything was mixed fully. So again, a little bit longer than the directions say, but I would say I stirred it for about five minutes, maybe take or give a minute or two. And I just left it on the high heat and covered it up and kind of came back every 15 minutes or so. And you can see each time that I'm taking off the lid, what it looks like after 15 minutes. I let it cook the full 40 minutes because I wanted to make sure that I was actually cooking everything um, the way that it needed to be cooked because I didn't want to mess anything up. Like I said, this is my first time doing it. Um, it really didn't specify if you're supposed to be mixing this with a spoon or your stick blender. I just chose to do my stick blender every so often. Um, the first time I checked it, it was like a little bit thicker consistency on top. It was a little bit goopy, so I kind of scraped the edges of the pot and scraped my stick blender as well to make sure that everything was kind of getting fully incorporated. And I'm noticing as I'm looking at this right now, I'm seeing all the little bubbles fly out. It's so cute. But anyway, onward. <laughs> So the last time I pull off the lid, you could see that the soap is kind of an amber color um, and it's very clear. So I'm just taking about 1% um, dilution and we're going to measure the pH. This, I'm not sure if I did it right, but I just kind of went off the directions and the measurements I had. I'm using pH strips. You can use a pH meter. Um, those are very expensive. These are a cheap find on Amazon. Um, you can also do a zap test. The easiest way to check for the doneness is to take a tiny bit of the soap and put it on a spoon and touch it to your tongue. See if it zaps um, when you're touching your tongue. It's going to be like a battery um, kind of zap. Um, cook the soap about another 10 to 20 minutes if you're getting a zap. Um, again, you could also make the solution, like I said, with the pH meter. You want to make sure that you are below 10% on your pH. So I took some of the hot boiling water that I had and like I said I made it to like a diluted um, mixture of the soap. Um, you also want to make sure when you're doing that that this is very clear when the soap is fully dissolved when you're using the hot water. It should be a very transparent product. If it's cloudy you need to cook the soap a little bit longer. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Again I don't have a lot of information on this. Um, if you have made soap like this, feel free to leave comments, correct me anytime throughout this process because, again, this is all me trying something new, sort of trial and error. Um, I'm going off a recipe I found online. It, it was a little bit of a struggle for me. I don't know if I've said that 500 times yet, but um, I just wanted to add that. So when you're checking the pH, at least according to these strips, you kind of just dunk it in the water pretty quickly. You're not really supposed to hold it there. I probably hold it a little bit longer than I needed to, but I did a couple of these to make sure it was working right. Um, I would say that based on this meter, I'm um, getting close to about a 7 or an 8. I thought it was a little bit closer to an 8, but when you look on the camera, it is kind of hard to tell. Um, but I would say this is good. So I went ahead and went on to the next step. Um, at this point, you are going to want to start dissolving the soap paste. Um, you're going to bring a full three quarts of your water to a boil, or at least that's what the direction said. Uh, I was a little bit confused on this part, I'll be honest. Um, but also says very slowly, once your water is boiling, um, put it into your, your slow cooker within about a half inch from the top of your pot. Um, you also want to do it really slow. If you do it too quickly, you'll start to get like a volcano sort of effect happen. Um, I kind of noticed it a little bit as I was pouring. Um, I was trying to get it to do it to show you guys so you could see what that would look like. That's bad. Um, you don't want your soap to seize up. You don't want large blobs of paste. 
Um, and also the directions say do not start stirring at this point because it will be very sticky. Once you've added the water, um, as much as you can, at least this is how I did it, add as much as you can within a half inch from the top. I went a little bit more because I really didn't have room in my crock pot. Um, it says to use a six quart crock pot. I'm pretty positive that's what I have. I, I don't know, maybe somebody else is getting something different. So leave a comment below if you've used this recipe or had issues with that. Um, once you've added some of the water, you want to go ahead and put the plastic wrap on top. This is kind of optional. It says the reason you're doing this is so you don't have to keep adding distilled water throughout the process. Um, allow the soap to cook undisturbed for two to three hours. So I started my timer and I'm kind of just letting it sit. Um, once we are done with that, we're going to peel back the the plastic wrap and see what happens. Also one last thing I wanted to add when you're adding this plastic wrap, um, once you have that on top you do want to put your slow cooker to the low setting temperature um, just so you don't I guess evaporate anything too quickly or boil it or you know some kind of mess happens. So after that has had time to cook the next step is to um, replace the plastic wrap with a lid. Um, you also want to take everything that is on the bottom of the pot. You'll notice there will be a lot of gel at this point and just kind of stir everything around. Make sure you like get some of the clumps out and um, go ahead and make sure everything's mixed really well. Um, it also says that if you want to leave this overnight and stop here you can. This is a good point. Um, but I went ahead and I went added water at this point. Um, it says the next day you need to stir it thoroughly if you're leaving it overnight. If there are any remain remaining lumps of soap and paste, add a little bit more water and turn the cooker on for about another 30 to 60 minutes. So if you do stop, you want to make sure you warm the soap up again. Um, I actually left mine for a few days because I had something come up, so there was nothing ruined with it. Um, the end product came out great. So the next part is... You're going to place a 5 liter pitcher or a stock pot on your scale and zero it out. Carefully transfer all the soap from the pitcher with a ladle or a measuring cup. So once it's been heated back up, everything is nice and warm, you're going to start um, transferring it onto your scale. So I will say that this part was a little bit tricky, but I did manage to get it all out. I used a spoon to scrape mine out into the crock pot. Um, I tried something else first. It wasn't working, so I just started over. It said, so your pot is zeroed out, and once you get all of the gel into your pot, you need to make sure that you bring the total weight of your soap up to 175 ounces, and then stir and combine with a spatula. So we're just letting the soap paste kind of dissolve into water. Um, I had to let mine sit for a couple hours. Um, it ended up not melting all the way, so I put it on the stove top at a really, really low heat to kind of speed that up, and that seemed to help it a little bit. So those are just some tips for you if you're doing it this way. So while that soap was going ahead and the gel was kind of doing its thing, turning into soap, you can go ahead and start preparing your saline water. Um, it says, while the soap is diluting, make a 20% saline solution. Combine 14.11 ounces of water, distilled water, and 3.5 ounces of salt, and you put it in a microwavable bowl or cup. You do microwave this for about two minutes, and then start stirring for one minute or until it's dissolved. So I stirred it a little after I measured it and then I put it in the microwave for a couple minutes and most of the salt was dissolved. Um, so I only had to stir it for a short time and then the saline water was pretty much ready to go. Okay, now we're going to start taking the soap after everything has melted down, all the gel paste is turned into soap. We're going to split that down into different sections and then we're going to test our fragrance oil and add saline water. So the easiest way to um, scent or fragrance your soap is a liter at a time. So you take a liter of your liquid soap and see if it'll behave with the um, fragrance oil because you don't want to ruin the entire batch of soap. 
So weigh about 100, or sorry, 980 grams or 34.6 ounces of soap into a four quart uh, measuring cup. And then you're gonna add about 2% of your favorite fragrance oil or um, whatever you have if you're using essential oils, anything like that. And then you're also gonna use the saline that you had um, to start to thicken up your soap a little bit. So you can go ahead and set that on the scale, zero it out again, um, your soap mixture. And then you're going to do about 30 grams of the saline water to start out with and see how that's working, see how the consistency is. And then you can add more saline, about two to four grams at a time, and get the thickness and the consistency of you, that you want it. It should be like a warm honey consistency, but I know everybody likes it a little bit different. Um, you can go all anywhere from 40 to 100 grams of saline to thicken it. Just remember that you really can't go backwards once you start doing this. So um, it's best to do it a little bit at a time and then keep stirring. I also add some color at this point. Um, I did three different types of batches because we were doing this in small little ones. And it's my first time making soap this way. So I tried a few different fragrance oils. All of the ones I used were from Brambleberry. I used Sweet Nectar and Hibiscus, which is the red one I'm working on now. I think that was by far my favorite. Um, then I did a blue soap and I used the Coconut Paradise fragrance oil that they have. And um, then I also did the Cucumber Melon and I, I colored that one green because I just had a little bit left over um, and I, I couldn't use all the fragrance oil. So um, if you're, um, soap is still kind of warm at this point at the end you can just you know pour them in the bottles but you want to leave the screw tops off to prevent like condensation or anything like that also make sure that you clean your bottles before you put them in there um, sterilize them I do mine in bleach water and then I spritz them with rubbing alcohol <laughs> um, maybe a little bit excessive I don't know but that's what I like to do and then when they set out because there was a lot of bubbles when I poured them into my containers I let them sit out, you know, a few hours, and then I did spritz them down with rubbing alcohol again to get the kind of bubbles that were coming on top to disappear. And then after an hour or so of that, I just went ahead and put the caps on and everything came out great. I am very happy and I feel very successful that I was able to complete my first time of making um, liquid soap because I've been wanting to do it for so long and I hope this tutorial was kind of easy for you guys and it gives you confidence to go ahead and um, make your own soap. Um, if you have questions, leave them down below. I might not know all the answers, but maybe somebody else in the community does. Um, so I'd love to hear about it. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe because it does help the channel.